The most important factor in exposing a criminal is the motive. Be it power, greed or lust, most criminals resort to violence with a goal in mind. But what of those rogue perpetrators for whom law-breaking is simply a way of life? Possibly the most dangerous of movie wrongdoers, these are the mad and bad. The film that elevated Alfred Hitchcock's profile as a director to the A-list and scored him his first major hit was 1951's Strangers on a Train. The exploration of what was to become an enduring theme for Hitchcock, Strangers on a Train delved deep into the mind of a psychotic killer. From the instant Robert Walker meets Farley Granger, seemingly by chance on a train, and entertains him with murderous theories, we are left in no doubt that he is a dangerous madman. Now, let's say that, that you'd like to get rid of your wife. It's a morbid thought. Two fellows meet accidentally, like you and me. No connection between them at all. Never saw each other before. Each one has somebody that he'd like to get rid of. So, they swap murders. Swap murders? <laughs> Each fellow does the other fellow's murder. Then there's nothing to connect them. Each one has murdered a total stranger. Like, you do my murder, mm. I do yours. Walker's disturbed yet charismatic character becomes quickly obsessed with his unrequited mission of murder and employs all the behavior of the paranoid obsessive. He stalks his unwilling co-conspirator, sees murder in all situations, and becomes preoccupied with details. Hitchcock heightens the paranoid tension with the masterful incorporation of iconic props and impressive camera work. As a study of a psychopath, Strangers on a Train was groundbreaking, and not only made Robert Walker a star, but also included Hitchcock's daughter Patricia in a pivotal role. He looked at me hands were on her throat and he was strangling me in get carter michael kane is less of an out and out madman and more the tough guy loner hell-bent on revenge however it's an obsession that takes him to the edge of madness everybody with even the slightest connection to his brother's death feels the swift wrath of kane proving mercy has no place in the mind of the mad and bad that's it then track for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake. You knew what I'd do, didn't you, Elf? Christ, I didn't kill him. I know you didn't kill him. I know! Arguably Kane's finest film, Get Carter portrays violence and revenge with as much brutal realism as possible without resorting to shock tactics. Taken away from the city streets of many films of the genre, and set against the backdrop of a grim and impoverished northern English town, Get Carter has become a cult classic, and one that many directors have referenced and revered in their careers. I liked it because it was stylish and it had an identity. I was just very impressed with it. It's not every day that we toss out films like that, you see. When we do, I think it's, um, it's worth noting them. The most dangerous trait in a criminal is unpredictability. And there's nothing as erratic as a broken mind. But the mad and bad blend in with the crowd, only showing their true colors when it's too late. Just pray you're not the object of their obsession.